Hi everyone, in this lecture we're going to talk about Flask application flow control. Now, uh, our script does not behave like a typical script. So first off, let me just go ahead and copy that from the previous lecture. I'm just going to put it here. Now this script doesn't behave like a typical script. The way that it doesn't behave like that is because the flow of our uh, script is not like from top to bottom. The flow of our application is not from top to uh, bottom. The flow of our code is actually controlled by the Flask server process. Our current web server or Flask server doesn't do anything currently because the job of the web server is to wait for incoming requests. What do I mean by that? So let's run this file. I'm going to say 3.flaskflowcontrol.py. Now, whenever you run that and you go to the browser and you can see this is live here, and I can see that our Flask server basically doesn't do anything. Why? because it is going to wait for the browser to send some requests. Now, to make a request in the browser, we need to visit our website. So now you can see that we have actually visited that and we have received this message. I'm going to bring this up and we're going to talk about that a little bit more. I'm going to zoom in here. Now, when we visit our website, the browser is going to send an HTTP GET request to the server which is our Flask server, and it is going to ask for a specific page. In this case, the URL specifies that the browser should contact 127.0.0.1 at port 5000. At what port? At the port 5000. We can take a look at this in the terminal as well, right here. Now, the IP address 127.0.0.1 is a special address that always points to our local host, which basically is the computer you're working on right now. The process listening for connections on port 5000 is our Flask server. If there is nothing else in the URL, then it means that we are visiting the root page for this site, and the name of that page is basically a simple slash. So there is an implicit slash in here that you cannot see. So if I provide it here, and if I just go ahead and if I hit enter, it is going to be redirected to the home page. Now Flask looks up the... Now that, uh, that's why this, just before going to the Flask, uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, give you a little bit more about this uh, root page, which is the, that forward slash, that simple slash. That is uh, why, because... Uh, that is the root page. The reason for it being the root page is, be uh, is because we see it in here as well. And now you can see if you refresh the page, what does that mean? It means that a GET request has been sent to the Flask development server. Then the Flask, <coughs> excuse me, the Flask server is going to look up that URL and it is going to map it to whatever function it is that is, uh, um, that is, um, uh, associated with that URL and then it is going to call that view function for us. You can see because we are in the root page we just see in here a back a, a forward slash just a slash with an HTTP GET request and a status of 200. So in, uh, in uh, conclusion the flow of our application is controlled by the HTTP requests that come in to our Flask server then a view function uh, is going to be called if it is its URL is actually requested. This also means that every time we refresh the page, we are going to grab, we are going to create a new request, and we we can also see that in the in the uh, terminal as well in the server log. This is called server log. The lines that I've highlighted. So if I refresh the page and if I come here, you can see we have basically made another request. So Again, the browser makes a request to the server. The server is not going to do until a request is going to come in. Then the server, based on the request's URL, is going to call a view function. Whichever URL belongs to whichever view function, that view function is going to be called, depending on which URL it is that we are actually working on. Now, to show you this better, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, uh, a second page to our application. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say app.route. 
this is at Abdel route now whenever you're trying to create a new page every url they have to start with the main uh the root url which is the slash so if you do not provide the slash it is not going to work now i'm just going to create a url um, that is going to be cool so at the end of the current url if you just provide a slash and then cool you're going to see the view function being called for that url what is the view function? The view function, I'm just going to say cool. I'm going to say return uh, flask is awesome. So awesome. Awesome. So this is going to be the view function. Now, how is this going to work? Let me save that. Whenever you save it, it is going to say that changes are going to be detected within our flask server. Now, how can we go to that URL? What is the URL? The URL is this one. So I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to put it at the end of the root URL. When you save it, you can see that it says Flask is awesome there. And what we have actually done is we have made a request to the slash cool URL. That's why we can see slash cool in here. I'm going to zoom in a little so you can see slash cool. We made an HTTP GET request to this URL with a status of 200 on this uh you on this ip address so after the uh browser sends that request for a get requ which is a get request to the slash cool then the uh, what the flask server does is the flask server is going to look up our application it is going to find which url uh which sorry which view function the slash cool url is associated with in this case we can see that this hello um um why is this hello world it was welcome okay this is hello world it doesn't really matter i'm just going to change it to welcome i'm going to change it to welcome there and i'm going to change it to welcome here okay there we go so whenever we make that request get request the browser is going to send the request to the Flask server. The Flask server is going to grab that URL and it is going to map it to that view function to which that URL is associated with. So to this slash cool, which, UR, which uh, view function is associated with? This cool function. That's why Flask is awesome is going to run. And you can see this is my very f first Flask application is not running. We are just basically showing Flask is awesome now uh you might have this you might have a question like uh does it have to be the same the url that we are trying to create for a new page and the name of the view function no they do not have to be the same it certainly is a convention that people use like most of the time you're going to see that the name of the url and the name of the view function they're the same that's something that you're going to see for the most part but it doesn't have to be the same you can come up with a different name so you can say cool you can say um, amazing then if I just save it changes were detected now cool is going to throw an error so if I just go ahead and save that uh, we are not going to have that cool anymore so I'm just going to go to that oh we have the cool the cool is not uh, gone because that is the URL sorry for that the cool is going to be there so if I save it, it again it says flask is awesome flask is awesome -er. i'm just going to add an r so you can really see that refresh you can see the r has been added there so it doesn't really have to be the same this url and the view function that is associated with it but that's something that you can do well basically it, it depends on you with this our lecture comes to an end and see you in the next one